Hello and welcome back to this video series where we're looking at building a e-commerce platform in 25 days using Next, Netlify and Stripe. In this video, we are going to look at dynamic routes in Next.js, so how we can pass some data in uh, through our route and dynamically change what is displayed on the page. So if we look at our application at the moment, it's it's pretty it's pretty boring, it's pretty basic. Uh, we have a home page which welcomes our users. We have an about page, but all of this is just static content. Nothing's changing here. Uh, but what if we could add uh, another page that actually welcomed our users by name? So they could put their name in here and say slash John, uh, and it would say welcome John. Or we could say slash Mary, and it would say welcome Mary. So at the moment, you'll see that we're getting this 404 because we haven't actually created this page in our pages directory. Uh, and if we wanted to do this statically, we would have to create a page in our pages directory for literally every single name that exists in the entire world, which is obviously impossible. Thankfully, Next has our back with something called dynamic routes. So the way we create a page with a dynamic route is we just create a new file in the pages directory, um, but we do this weird syntax in the in the naming of it, uh, where we, we use a square bracket, and then uh, whatever we want our dynamic part to be called. So this is kind of like declaring a variable, so something that can change. And then we close our square bracket, uh, and then .js is the extension. So what this is saying is this part of the route is going to be dynamic. It can be any value, but I want to be able to access that value with the name identifier. So if someone was to go to slash John, for example, uh, then it's going to load this component and then name is going to be set to the value John. If this was Mary, uh, then the value for name is going to be set to Mary. And if we put anything in here that matches another route, so if we did put slash about, it's going to ignore this dynamic route and look for the static one that matches it. So it would give us our about page. So let's build our name component. So this looks just like any other component from our pages directory. And it is, if we go to back to our app, you'll see that we are now actually loading a component. We're not seeing that 404 anymore. So if we go to slash John, we see this will be dynamic. And if we go to slash Mary, we see this will be dynamic. So it is actually loading that component. And as I mentioned before, if we went to slash about, it would load our about page. So if it matches a, a static page, um, then it will go to that first, but anything else uh, will render this dynamic route and pass in that value as the name. So let's access that name. So the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in a package called use router. And that's going to be from next slash router. Okay, so use router is a hook, so similar to use state or use effect. Um, so we need to call this hook within our component. And then this router is going to give us access to something called query. So we can say const query is equal to router.query. And then we can just console log out query to see what's there. So now if we go back to our page and we navigate to slash John and open the console, we should see that there is this new object with the name John. And if we navigate to Mary, we see this object with the name Mary. So this name identifier will always match whatever we call our dynamic route. So here, if I called this uh, puppies, and then we refresh our page, you'll see puppies Mary. And if we change this to John, we'll see puppies John. <laughs> cool, so I'm gonna change that back to name because puppies doesn't make sense. So we could create a new variable called name, which is equal to query dot name. But when we're creating a new variable that has the same identifier as a key on the object that we're setting it to, uh, we can use something called object destructuring um, and wrap curly brackets around this and then we can get rid of the dot name. So this is kind of like plucking out the value name from query. And since we're just declaring query here um, and then plucking out that name, we can actually pluck out that name directly uh, from router.query. So we can put this statement here and get rid of this one. And we should still be seeing the name printed out to the console. So John, and then if we change this to Mary, we see Mary. Awesome, so that's the same. 
So this may not look like it's it's saving us many lines here. Um, it might just be kind of adding some complexity. Uh, but object destructuring is a, a really great tool to understand, um, especially if you need to pluck out multiple values from um, a big JSON object. But yeah, we'll be looking at more of that later. So now we have our name variable. We just need to write a welcome message. And we'll change this paragraph to a h1 because we want it to stand out. And we can get rid of our console log and head back to the app. Okay, so you see this page is welcoming Mary. Uh, and if we change this to John, then it's welcoming John. And if we change this to Sam or Alex or anyone else, uh, you'll see that that value that we have specified here um, is dynamically being fed into our component and then our component is accessing that variable um, and we can display a customized message uh, to each of our users. Awesome, so that's everything that I wanted to go through in this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll be looking at hosting on Netlify. So how do we take this super awesome web app and host it on the internet and get it in the hands of investors that are going to want to invest big on this super awesome app uh, that can welcome different people uh, by their names.